Welcome to Midnight Mule FPL. I'm Midnight Mule and this is the video where we look at the various leagues and see how good or bad I may have done in game week 7 and what my wildcard looks like for game week 8. Top scorer for game week 7 in the Midnight Mule mini league was Boyd Revel with Boyd Boys with 83 points. So this is how they did it. Watkins got 23 points, Trippier for 12, Morris for 10, Saka for 9, Shah for 7, Cash for six, and then Harlem was captain for four. And on the bench, there was Saliba for six points. But very good score. Globally, it was a lowish scoring week, so that was a, a good score with what we had going on for game week seven. Top of our league is Green Tick by JG with 69 points, 497 points in total. They had Odegaard for 17 points, Morris for 10, Alvarez for eight, Diaby for eight. The three defenders of Saliba, Burn and Cash all got six points. Captain Haaland four and on the bench was Saka for nine points. So well done for being top of the league at the moment. Now if you saw my video last week I said I was very tempted to wildcard and I didn't. Fortunately Zvedzaz2012 asked the question can you make a video on how your wildcard would look sir? Very polite of him. So I said I didn't have time to make it but this is how I thought it would look. So I didn't wildcard. But if I did, I said I'd have Pope, who got a clean sheet. Trippier, he got 12 points. Botman didn't play, so a stupid one for minus two. Cash, clean sheet and assist. Midfield, Sun got a goal. Salah blank, Fernandez blank. Mitoma would have been on the bench. Diaby, he got a couple of assists. Watkins, he got 23 points. Morris got 10 points and Darwin did nothing. So no Haaland, I said. So I didn't wildcard. That's not what I did. So I didn't get all those points. However, at least I had a record of what I said I would do. What actually happened was I got 34 points, which is extremely bad. So let's have a look at that fun I did with that. Trippier for 12 points, Morris for 10, and nobody else did anything. Harlan got two, Captain four points. However, I did get something right. I had three double game week players on the bench because I said it's not worth playing them. I don't think they can do very well. Anderson came on for Botman for one point, and then on my bench, Nakamba for three, Bayer for two. So although I had an awful week, at least I did right putting the double game week players on the bench. <laughs> Got to look for um, positives where you can, I think. So 34 points, game week rank of 8.6 million. So I'm down to just outside the three and a half million. Nice big red arrow. We've only had seven game weeks. Got another 31 left, so... Uh, I'm not worried, just slightly amused, I think. So overall, look at this. I'm only six points inside the four million mark. If I get worse than four million, I don't know if I'm going to be off this chart or what. But again, another bright side. I'm currently 156 points behind top place. If in 31 weeks time, I'm 156 points behind top place, that would be extremely good. So that's OK. Nothing to worry about there. <laughs> Everything's good. Despite all this, 859 subscribers. Thank you very much to everyone who <laughs> enjoys my pain. On the uh, FPL Game Week website, you can see content creators, see how they're doing. Now, what's on FPL? They're topped with 499. And then that's better than anyone in the Midnight Mule Mini League. But the top 25, I think it is on, my, on the Mini League, would be between position one and two on the content creators. So there's a lot of people that could be content creators that are doing better than the current lot. However, in third place, someone you might know, I sometimes watch is Gianni Boutis. And an FPL Fran, my favourite one possibly for the content, he's down in fourth place at the moment. I am down in 64th place, there I am, and three points higher than me is Ross. So look at that, I'm in good company. And on the same score as Ross is Az from Black Box. Now, Az last week did a live stream on FPL about his wild card. And I think it's the most entertaining <laughs> FPL live stream I've seen. So absolutely worth going back to watch that. Um, it was very, very good. I didn't watch it live. I watched it shortly afterwards, but it's very good. F Big Man Bakai, you may recognise him. I'm two points behind him at the moment, but I am at least above Nima. So that's something. So I am going to wildcard this week. I've already pressed the button. I will show you where I am at the moment. This is what I am currently intending to do, but there are some European games tonight. So it could change. We may get injury news. But as things stand, this is how I'm looking. I've got Sun as captain. So there we go. And his two mates, Madison and Pedro Poirot, they're all the way to Luton. 
If I need to save a bit of money, I can swap Poro for Udogi, but I would rather have Poro, I think, just about. And then my vice captain is Salah, away to Brighton, and I'm taking a risk. This is the, f I'm taking three quite big risks here. The first one is I've got Darwin. He is a minute's risk. I'm aware he's playing to, he is playing tonight. If he was guaranteed like 70, 80 minutes, then I think lots of people would have him, but he is a bit, bit of a dodgy geezer regarding time. But we'll see. Anyway, how else are we doing? My only home player this week that I'm starting is Ariola. He's home to Newcastle and people would expect Newcastle to score. So overall, this might be a lowest scoring game week for me on the wildcard. I'm aware of that. Trippier away to West Ham. West Ham have a good chance of scoring, of course. Cash and his two mates, DRB and Watkins, as things stand, away to Wolves. DRB is flagged, but my bench is OK. So if it's a minor injury and he should be back soon, I'm probably going to keep DRB all right. Now, of course, they're playing Wolves. So that is a Derby. And in Derby games, the difference between the two teams tend to get lessened. So anything could happen there. Obviously, anything. Not anything could happen, but maybe Wolves are going to win 1-0. Maybe Villa are going to thrash him 10-0. Who knows? And then my second biggest differential, I'd say, is I'm having Hoyland up front. Oh, another home game. Look at that. Home to Brentford. So this is a big gamble because he's done nothing so far in the FPL. He is a new player, but he's been doing all right in Europe. And I'm kind of thinking Rashford and Fernandes feeding the ball into him. He's going to score. Brentford are awful at the moment. Man United have got a nice run. I haven't got any other United players. So a bit of a gamble. But the biggest differential is, as you can probably see, there's no Haaland. There's no Alvarez. There's no Man City players whatsoever. Not only that, I don't have an easy route to get Haaland back. So if after two, three weeks, I'm uh, very, very sorry because I haven't got Haaland, I'm going to have to make quite a few subs to get him back in, quite a few transfers. So that's a lot of fun for future weeks by the looks of it. And then on my bench, I've got Neto in goal. He's got some nicest fixtures coming up. And I think he's an all right keeper. I think I quite like him. And then Matoma, home to Liverpool. So if Diaby doesn't play and Matoma comes on, I'm absolutely fine with that. Colwell, nice cheap defender, seems to be playing all the time. And then White, home to Man City, last on my bench. But in a couple of game weeks' time, at least I've got an Arsenal player. So my plan would be I'm going to have to make several transfers in the next few weeks to keep the team fresh. So I've not worked out how I'm going to do these transfers because every week things the landscape changes so much it's really tricky to say in three weeks time I'm going to do this. Because who knows what I'm going to do. So I we don't know if Saka's fit. If Saka's definitely playing this weekend, I may make some changes and get Saka in. But I don't know for sure. In case you're wondering about the picture, Newcastle, as you probably know, are back in Europe. And they won a game at St James's Park. So very, very good. That's supposed to be Brian Johnson, the lead singer of ACDC. The reason I've put him there, apart from the fact I used to listen to ACDC back in the 80s, saw them live in Wembley Arena. It's his birthday today, October the 5th. He was born in 1947. So Brian Johnson, his birthday, Newcastle back in Europe. There you go. One of their biggest fans. And that's it. Um, I'm sure I can manage to fall a bit further than three and a half million before I start going up. I'm not expecting a big score this week, but hopefully over the next few weeks, I'll start to do a bit better. Thank you very much for watching. Bye.